Check it out, guys. I can control my winch without the cord from inside the cab. This is... Matt. And I am... Matt. <laughs> <laughs> and today, Matt's going to help me put an in-cab winch controller in the Jeep Comanche. And it's kind of difficult because this is a 5-pin. The new Ur winches are 5-pin, and it's a lot harder to do than the old-school 3-pin style. So this video is for the newer 5-pin winches, and if you want to put an in-cab winch controller inside your Jeep or vehicle, whatever the heck you have, this is the video for you. Let's get started. This video is brought to you by WD-40. All right, here's some tools that you guys will need for this project. You might need a multimeter. I've decided to go with a little light that lets me know when this is activated. We've got a safety switch, a three-way switch, a fuse, some wire, your winch controller. You might need a Sharpie, and of course a few other tools we'll mention along the way. So what we need to do first is find out where 12 volts is connected to the inside of this uh, winch connector. Connect the multimeter to a known good ground and try and find that pin out. So we can see here that's zero and here that's 12 and a half volts. So that's going to be the source voltage that the remote switch uses to operate the winch. So grab you some handy dandy cardboard and a sharpie. We're going to mark this while he read these out. I marked them down. So we made the little D drawing, 12 volts right here. Then we're going to find the relay ground and the ground off of the winch. If you're running a warn, it's probably going to be the same, but if not, it might be different. So let me show you how to find this. So now that we found 12 volts, we know the 12 volt pin is uh, right at about 4 o'clock. Uh, we'll use the ground pin and go clockwise around the plug until we find 12 volts. So that tells us that this we know is ground and this at four o'clock is positive. So now it gets kind of complicated because this is actually backwards of the winch. So you're going to think of it like this and then we're going to test and Matt's going to show you how to find the other parts that we need. All right so now that we found the ground and the negative from the battery uh, we know that this is the negative so what we're looking for is a beep sound when we hit the switch in both directions. So now we know uh, that these two pins are engaged in both in and out on the winch controller. So we know that that's the other grounding pin for the relay. And that is right here? Right here. Oh, the relay ground. This one. Yeah. Now, tell me what, uh, how do we know which one is in and which one's out? Let's do that. So to find in and out, um, again, the plug is going to be mirror of this. So this is going to be our plus 12 volts, and when we connect to, say, 12 o'clock, he will, Matt will switch it one way, and it won't work, and when he switches it the other way, it'll work. So that way is pulling cable in, so we know that 12 o'clock to um, 8 o'clock is going to be in, and when we come over here to 4 o'clock, that's going to be out, and when he tries to pull it in, we get nothing. So now we've figured out what each pin does on the wire. Basically we figured out all this stuff. If you have a worn winch, it's probably like this, so you can just copy it. Now when you're finding those, you set your doodad <laughs> up like this. Tell us what this does here. So this symbol that looks like a speaker, anytime that you make connection, it's going to make a beep sound so that you don't have to be staring at it to look for, you know, ohms or uh, something other than OL, which is open loop. Right. Okay. So remember, if this is confusing for you, we're going to turn this around basically and hold it up to here. And then from the other side, you can kind of see which one is which because it's a mirror image, right? That's right. These are what all the pins are. And this is from the witch plug view. Wiring 101. This is a smart dude right here. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Safety PSA, we need to disconnect the battery. <laughs> Oops.
More bolts. Finally. Put them together. So what we have here is our master on off switch, which is this airplane switch, so that you can't accidentally leave it on. And then uh, we have our momentary rocker switch, so that's right here. So when you turn it on, or go in, it's going to send power and ground through these two wires up to the winch. That's going to make the winch go in. Flipping it the other way, it's going to send power and ground to the other relay side of the relay, making the winch go out. So for all you geeks out there, this is the master plan. And actually we forgot the LED light, which is right here. So it's going to get power from when you flip the master switch on. Nice. And then ground, obviously. We went with uh, some 16 gauge wire, which is way more than you need. You know, a lot of amps can go through 16 gauge compared to what we're going to be sending uh, to the winch. We could have got away with doing something like a 18 or 20 gauge. The reason I chose and like to go with this slightly heavier gauge is, uh, you know, your Jeep's bouncing around in the woods. <coughs> uh, wires break all the time. So having a little bit heavier wire is going to mean it's less likely to break and the winch will not fail on you when you need it the most. How many wires do we need for this? So for the way that we're going to wire it, we're going to need four wires to go from inside the cab out to the winch. Oh, now you're just getting really complicated. This is what engineers do in their spare time. <laughs> Should take some tape measure and put it on a different spool. <laughs> wow. Isn't that cool? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we have run those wires through the firewall. I've decided I'm going to put the switches right here. And then we added one more. This one goes to the ground. And I just have that ground attached right there to ground. And then if we come over here, Matt's working on this. What you got going on here, Matt? So what we have here is the... Uh, the green and the white wires are the positive in and out signal wires that are going to come from in the cab. Uh, we're going to reconnect the <clears throat> wires coming from in the cab and the switch wires so that the umbilical and the end cab uh, can both be used. <clears throat> and then the brown wire right here is at the bottom of the switch so that is going to be the switched ground for the relay. Did you guys get all that? Remember, easy. Easy, easy. easy. <laughs> and you're probably saying there was four wires from the cab, but one of them is going to go over the. Oh my gosh. There's a little bird in there. <laughs> Welcome to the peep show. One of them's going to go to hot over there. So we diverted that wire, right? We did divert that wire, yeah. Okay, despite having picked the wrong color wire to use, we did that before we broke into the box. But, okay, all you need to know is where they go to. So the white wire is... What's the white wire? It's going to be in or out. Okay. In or out. Black wire is? Ground to the chassis. Red wire is? Positive to the battery. Green wire is? Going to be in or out. Opposite of the white. And brown wire is? Switched ground to the relay. Alright, so we've zip tied some of this up. And now we're going to put this back on and tidy it all up. Matt pointed out that there is some corrosion happening right there. Hey Matt, look over here. We got some nasty corrosion. <laughs> that is totally fake. <laughs> so this would be a good time to put something on that. I have a lot of WD-40 products. I think I'm going to use... There's the Stay and Spray Gel Lubricant One Year Rest Preventative, but I think... No, that's the wrong one. This one. Focus! Specialist Long-Term Corrosion Inhibitor. That sounds good, right? Yeah, I think that'd be the stuff. That's got a ball in there. 
Is it gonna be like magic? Is it gonna, oh, it's bubbling. That's the magic. That's the magic happening? Do you think that's gonna like short out now? No. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. I said no. You are an engineer, right? Not for WD-40, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> no joke though. I have been using this stuff on uh, my metal parts that I sell online and I've been putting this on it before I package them. And it seems to, uh, it dries really good. Like doesn't leave like an oily residue. Is it like a tacky residue that it leaves or like a plastic film? Or I'm not an engineer. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just wait for this to dry yes. and then I can touch it. Now we're putting our winch back together the way we found it, minus a couple wires sticking out there. 100% there. Is that good? Perfect. Now we have to run this positive wire through the peep house. <laughs> Move out the way. Move out the way. Perfect. <laughs> so, we are conservationists. Uh, what do they say on the trail? Don't, uh, not be in Don't or... spill your beer on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that what they say? Somebody says that. <laughs> All right, so I haven't hooked it up yet, but what we're doing with that one wire is we need to find a hot. So you could just go in there to your uh, fuse box or wherever you can find a hot. But in my case, I have a hot block right there where that red block is. You see it? This thing? Yep, that's it. So we're adding a fusible link just for funsies and putting a really small fuse in there. I think this one's 5 amp, but Matt, you said what, you can use smaller? Yeah, I think I got a 2 amp on mine. It's a very low amperage circuit. And then that's going to our hot block, which that for you could be anywhere. Relay box, fuse box, battery, wherever. And you said you could even go to the back to the winch if you wanted to, right? Yes, yeah, so you can pull the 12 volt supply off the winch if you wanted to. Meaning that red wire that was in there. All right, we got our two switches and our dummy light for dummies like me. Let's see if it'll light up. <laughs> All right, do you know how those wires hook up? Because I have no idea. Yeah, we got to look at our CAD drawing and then we'll be good to go. <laughs> so this one went to our battery power and then that's gonna, this switch will turn that on and send that power to the other switch? Yes, which we're getting ready to wire up next. Right, but it's also going to send power to the idiot light. The idiot light. Oh no, we lost our light light. The idiot light is grounded here to the ground, which goes, you said, to the gas pedal down there. Correct. And you don't have to ground that to the gas pedal, obviously. Just ground it somewhere. And now we've got a few more wires to connect here. All right, quick question. How do I know which wire to connect to the switch? There's six spots. So this is a double pole, double throw momentary switch. Let's see the other side of it. So the momentary part means when you push on it, it'll return to center on its own. You can't leave it turned on by accident. So you can go out with the winch, let it go, it'll stop. In with the winch, let it go, and it'll it'll stop. Okay. So, as we learned earlier, this is a five-wire setup, so we have to send power and ground to the relay in order for it to activate the winch. So we have ground coming in here, and we're going to have plus 12 volts coming in here. When we flip the switch this way, these two poles will be connected, and these two poles will be connected. So that's going to activate the in or out. Likewise, when you flip the switch the other way, these two and these two will be connected so that ground will go through and plus 12 will go through. All right, so it doesn't matter which side is which as long as you know which side is which. Right, so what we'll end up doing is we'll turn it on, flip the switch. If it's backwards, take the switch out, put it back in the other way, and then it'll be right. You brought the power into one side in the middle. 
the ground into one side in the middle. And then, okay, this ground to the one side in the middle goes to where? So this is chassis ground um, that we ran to the gas pedal earlier. Okay. So this is, the center pins are your supply ground and your supply 12 volts. Okay, and so this one, this ground came from the winch, and then you jumpered it over to the other side, and why did we do that? So when you operate the double pull, double throw switch, we want to send for both in operation and out operation, we want to send ground to the ground side of the relay. So uh, since we only have one ground coming in, um, the winch doesn't care uh, where it gets ground from, it just needs ground. So we have our main ground here, when it connects here, sends ground to the winch. When it connects between these two, it also sends power to the winch. And then, the, ground to the winch. and then the other two, the blue and the purple, is in and out. Yes. So when you operate the switch one way, you will have plus 12 volts go down the purple. And that'll be in, we'll say. And when you operate the switch this way, it'll make a connection between the red and the blue. And that'll operate the switch the opposite way. Now I've seen some people inside the Warren winch, they'll splice the brown and the black wires together for a five pole. Now why do we not want to do that? So we don't want to do that because that eliminates the built-in safety feature that Warren, Warren implemented uh, in later winch models. We're keeping the, the built-in safety feature because the five wire is safer than the three wire. So the three wire only sends power one way or the other. And I've had it, I'm sure a lot of you guys have had it too, to where the winch Something will happen with the wiring and it'll get stuck spooling in or uh, spooling out. And with the five wire, significantly lower probability of that happening because you're switching both positive and negative. So if either one of those fails, the winch won't work. <laughs> I know that's happened to Jeremy whenever, <laughs> every time he hits a tree, that seems to happen. <laughs> yeah, Jeremy would be a good candidate for in-cab winch wire instead of outside <laughs> along the fender winch wire. <laughs> We're ready to test, so hooking up the battery again. Let's test it. Let's do it. So first test will be the idiot light. Oh yeah. Idiot light works. Next test gonna be in and out switch. Ho oh, ho, I hear something. That Sweet. sounds good. Now let's, you're gonna have to go up there and tell me which way we're going. Okay, let's let's figure this out. All right, uh, hold on, focusing, okay. That is in, that is out. Perfect! Yes, good job. Easy. Good job, oh yeah, easy, so easy. Like a billion wires all over the place. Six. <laughs> it's like NASA up in here. Yeah, different colors. One more test we should do is make sure our umbilical cord works still, and it does. So now we have two ways to control the winch, from inside and from outside. Oh, check out how good that looks. Let's do it. Engaged. In. Out. Disengaged. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you, Matt. You're welcome. That was fun. That looks great. It's still safe, and I'll be able to get it from inside or from the outside if I just roll down the window and want to reach in. That's why I put it on that side, and I can still use the umbilical. Looks great. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing in there all sideways? I'm just getting comfortable. <laughs> Question of the day, what is your favorite winching story, good or bad, leave it in the comments box down below. I'll also leave links to those switches and where you can find this WD-40 locally down in the description box. So make sure to check that out. This was a great fun project that you guys can do at home. Hopefully we taught you enough to be able to do it yourself even if you don't have that same winch. Make sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe. We will see you in the next video.